Today it's time for a professional match of StarCraft 2 and what I've got for you is a Zerg versus Protoss where we find ourselves on the map Submarine. Spawning here in the top left hand corner playing with the red Protoss probes from South Korea, we have the highest ranked Protoss player in the world and he goes by the name of Trap. His opponent in the opposite corner playing with the blue Zerg pieces. He's not quite the highest ranked Protoss player in the world, but he is the highest ranked Zerg. Of course, that means we have none other than Raynor. Alrighty, so here we go. This is, without a shadow of a doubt, my favorite match from the Grand Finals of a Dreamhack Fall. The entire Best of 7 series was pretty good, but this game right here on Submarine is absolutely fantastic. So if you haven't seen it yet, I think you're gonna get a kick out of it. Now, very early Probe Scout right here by Trap. He's trying to see if he can block that hatchery from going up. Already, though, a spawning pool has been built inside of the main base of Raynor, which will be spotted right here by Trap. At the same time, one cheeky little drone moved out before this probe could actually see it. Now, this is one of those moves that has become quite popular, especially on the smaller maps in the map pool recently. There we go. We see a hatchery going down inside of the natural here of Trap. I've been playing this build order quite a bit myself as well on the ladder, and I gotta say, right? Protoss players um, seem to be extremely rigid when it comes to their build orders. Like, there's no denying that Terran and Zerk are very, very dependent on their builds as well, but Protoss certainly has the least wiggle room, right? Say you hit a supply block as Terran. Um, usually, I mean, you can kind of salvage that, right? Say with Zerk, you hit a supply block or you forget something. You can just add on an extra queen. As Protoss, though, I mean, you, you have zero wiggle room. So I personally found that whenever you can throw a Protoss player off of their build, it's extremely difficult for them to actually recover. Now, obviously, this is Trap we're talking about. He has seen the way you're supposed to play against this, and he's tried it many, many times, I'm sure. But here we go. So there's a pylon blocking that natural expansion from going down uh, for Raynor. So already, he's now forced to take what is normally the fourth base here, a little bit further up north. A couple of Zerklings will be working on that pylon over here. A uh, Zealot is already out, I was gonna say. It is here somewhere. It should be anyway. So second Zealot now is available as well. That means that Zealot number one is gonna be able to start working on the hatchery here as well. Interestingly enough, Trap hasn't actually decided to pull any additional probes. It seems like a lot of Protoss players are very fond of pulling, you know, four or five probes there to continue working on that for a little while longer. Eventually though, that Adept will be coming out. Nice zoning here by Trap, really trying to see if he can get that Stalker to come out as well. And he will be able to successfully do so. And obviously this is not, you know, an opening where you get Zirkling speed very quickly. So Trap should be able, ooh, <laughs> he should be able to micro that Adept backwards. Now Raynor obviously very well known for his Zirkling control. The Queen actually is going to be popping out of the hatchery very soon if he doesn't finish it off. Ooh, nicely done. Good control here by Trap though, really keeping those units alive to the best of his abilities, but this does now buy enough time for a queen to be produced there in that natural of the Protoss. A creep tumor gets planted down right away. Looks like apparently a probe and a zealot will be able to finish that one off. Super critical actually to make sure that there's not gonna be a tumor there in the natural, because obviously if you, even if you shut this down, right, and, and you have to deal with creep, you don't have any detection here anytime soon, you're gonna be in some trouble uh, if your opponent is gonna be able to delay your expansion for even longer. Alright, so, judging at least by the production tab, I see mostly drones here coming up for the Zerg. He still has a couple of Zerklings, but I mean, that's probably just to defend an imminent counter-attack. Brenda actually decided to still put down a tumor there on the edge of the creep anyway. She's gonna be able to block that expansion for a little while longer, I like it. So, there's three Adepts now in total. Now, this is actually an important little move here by Raynor. Sending these links inside of the main base of the Protoss player doesn't seem like a, a, a huge deal. He's basically sacrificing them, right? But he's forcing the Protoss player uh, to respond and to make sure that these Adepts are not gonna be able to go straight across the map. This becomes extremely tedious here for the Protoss player. Um, because he really needs to clean up his bases, right? What Protoss really wants to do at this point is send all of those units across the map. Well, he's got five of those Adepts right now. Link Speed will be finishing here very shortly, but this is still a dire scenario because there's about as many Adepts as there are Zerklings. I love the fact that Trap decided to put a pylon over there in the natural because this right now means that the Queens can't really help each other out here when it comes to defending the bases. Oracle is coming up right now. He might actually need to use a revelation there in a natural if he wants to get rid of that tumor. Look at that, by the way. Brilliant play there. At the same time, though, look at those adepts. Yeah. They are going to town here on a bunch of the probes, or rather drones, over at what is normally, I guess, the fourth, right? So I guess we can still call this the expansion of the Zerg player, but 
It's a little bit odd. Ooh, I love that little move, actually. Forcing those drones away from the safety of the mineral line and that spore crawler. This is going to allow him to get a lot more kills. Nicely done. Well, I mean... Ugh, you know what? Oh my god, I actually just realized it's only... Wait, did he kill one worker? That's actually insane. He only killed a one drone. I guess he still got some favorable... Yeah, he still got a favorable trait right there because he, he obviously managed to get rid of a lot of those Zerklings. Speaking of Zerklings, though, no, they're working right now over at the third base of Trap. Actually, <laughs> that's not quite his third base. That is actually his natural expo. He eventually does start his, uh, his natural uh, low ground expansion up here as well. But uh, not until the creep is completely dissipated. Okay, so here we go. So, what do you do right now if you're a Protoss player? Well, I think you gotta abuse the lack of creep spread here, right? This is one of the ways that you can certainly put on a little bit of pressure. He wants to try and see if he can kill more of these drones. The more drones he kills, the better this becomes. Usually you want to get about 10 drone kills if you can, then you're gonna be in an amazing spot, and there we go. Ooh, nicely done. Keeps these oracles alive as well. Nine workers up to this point. There's a fresh oracle right now inside of the natural of the Zerk player as well. Although, you know, those those terms apparently, natural and third base and fourth base and all that are just relative. Generally speaking, we call the first expansion the uh, the natural, but I guess this is the natural expansion. And uh, Anyways, you get what I'm trying to say. Um, how many oracles are we at? Okay, he's actually gonna go for a fifth oracle. I love it. It's become very popular recently to go for a heavy focus on Void Race, and I actually do think that's a pretty good option, especially if the Zerg player decides to go for a bunch of uh, roaches here. However, Oracles have a lot of mobility, they're very, very fast, and you can obviously abuse your opponent's misposition. It's not like, it's not like Void Rays are necessarily slow. Nicely done. Actually, only activating one of those Pulsar Beams, I'm pretty sure. The thing is, right, if you get enough Oracles, at some point you can just start zapping down the Spore Crawler. So that's the reason why Raynor was pulling those drones as well. Fully aware of the fact that his opponent can actually kill a Mineral Line worth very, very easily. Now, three Queens are available over here. They have a little bit of energy. Five Queens right now decide to join up together. There's gonna be a Twilight Council on the back of this, and then also a Gateway and a Robo Facility. There's the Templar Archives coming down too, so just good old Archon Immortal Zealot. And I'm probably into Storm eventually. Revelation ability, obviously, in the most recent balance patch was halved when it comes to the energy cost. So nicely done there. And actually, ooh, okay, this is apparently the moment where we do see those oracles commit. Now look at the damage output. We never really see this. The math is a little complicated, but apparently five oracles do beat, I think what that was, was five queens as well. Apparently they do beat that in a straight up fight quite comfortably, and that's a big loss. Usually, right, on a map like this, Zerg players love to go for an aggressive follow-up as well, using the Queens on the offensive when they open up with a, uh, you know, a proxy hatchery over there. Now, at the same time, a Roach Ravager clump has made their way across the map. There is a shield battery available, but no energy right here on the next side to really uh, battery overcharge here uh, for at least the time being. Second side before will be produced. Oracles will likely go all the way back home here. 19 workers have actually been killed here by the Protoss player. Fantastic moves here by Trap. He's got to be careful, though, because these Ravagers, obviously, they don't mess around. I mean, I'm looking at this right now, though. Yeah, unless the Zerklings get a perfect wraparound, I think this is going to be fine. So now there's energy available for the shield battery overcharge. Oracles have decided to come back home as well. They still have a little bit of leftover energy. They'll be able to kill maybe... Uh... Oh, my God. It always looks like they're out of energy, but they can still... That's so weird. It looks like this guy is out of energy for, like, the last 10 minutes. And for some reason... Okay, maybe five seconds, but for some reason, uh, he still kills like three of those <laughs> Ravagers on his way out. That always happens. You can't really judge an Oracle very easily by the little, you know, magenta-ish bar below its, uh, its shields and health. Anyhow, good position here for Trap, though. The only problem here is that he doesn't have a third base. And he, you know, he's kind of forced right now into what seems to be a two-base push or a very late third. He's already oversaturating his expansions, though, and that's... Or his bases, rather, and that's... Yeah, it's not ideal. This army over here is scary. So Zerk has been desperately trying to add on more workers. But since those oracles have been so effective, we are now looking at a, uh, a relatively low amount of workers here for the Zerk player as well. Still keeping the majority of those oracles alive. Very, very nice. Look at the uh, efficiency right here of Protoss, man. It's so sick. So this is an army composition, Roach Ravager, that's really good if you're ahead in economy, but it's really not that great when you're kind of even or even behind, right? It's not a great situation to be in. Now, still no third Nexus. 
that is making this move the trap is going for for all intents and purposes an all-in here we go Ooh, good force field slices off one of the queens a couple roaches as well zerkings decide to come in from the back but the archon immediately starts zapping away at it as well still though lots of reinforcing zerk units are coming in using that three base economy additional zealots warped in from a bit of a distance as well looks like ooh, the archon may very well end up going down but it's still dealing a lot of damage man that archon uh that archon rotter is super super powerful here these are without shields they have like zero health remaining there we go eventually one of them falls but Good micro here by Trap, all things considered. He decides to move that battery, or sorry, the prism a little bit further forward. Decides to now add in two more Archons and then also four additional Zealots. You gotta be careful though. This Zerg's three base eco is not to be underestimated. He's getting himself a ton of reinforcements. Eventually it looks like the prism is gonna have to unseach over there. Reinforcing Zerg units are coming in from all three bases. Very aggressive positioning here by Trap. He needs to make sure that this does not get biled down. Nice corrosive right there, though, on a lot of those force fields. Oh, just barely keeps some of this alive as well. Additional drones, though, are being killed here during all of this as well. Is there going to be enough right now for the Zerg player to actually push this back? Eventually, maybe, he's going to be able to get enough? Hmm, okay. Well, this could actually be just game over right here for Trap, to be completely honest with you. Unless he loses that prism, man. Like, he is so, so, uh, so greedy on that prism. I mean... He knows he needs to get a critical amount of damage done. Right now, he's not going to be able to reinforce this, so I think he might need to, like, recall on out of here. I don't know if he's got the energy on the next side to uh, to use that, because at this point, you're just going to get overwhelmed, right? So, 40 drones have actually gone down in the grand scheme of things. Zerk has not stopped making units. Nice micro there once again by Trap. Trap is so good, man. Like, Trap once upon a time used to have... Very good Protoss versus Terran, but not that great of a uh, Protoss versus Zerg. These days, the guy is absolutely fantastic. Now, I really feel like he should be recalling here. And maybe keep some more of those units alive, but maybe... No, he's got plenty of energy. Maybe he didn't have the energy, is what I was going to say there. But I guess he really wants to try and get maximum value out of this. Okay, so, big picture. Third Nexus has been acquired here by Trap. He, however, lost all of his units, right? So when it comes to his actual army right now, it's basically a prism, a couple of zealots that are inside of that prism, and then two archons holding the door here at the front. He's gonna have to do with reinforcements at this point. There is an immortal coming up, there is a shield battery coming up as well. Zerk now has way more stuff. Okay. Now obviously the defensive position here for Protoss these days is absolutely phenomenal, especially as these batteries finish. Very important right there, nicely done, uh, that he decides to snipe that, uh, that shield battery. Zealot's still trying to do a little bit of damage as well, but those are mostly just there for distraction purposes. Extra Immortal comes in, and there it is. An extremely action-packed game of Zerg versus Protoss. Only 13 minutes on the clock, but I think we can all say that that was an amazing match of StarCraft. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button down below. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. But for now, I want to thank you for watching. Have an awesome day. Don't forget to smile, and I'll see you once again in the next one.